Hello, everybody. So I am uh, Denis Luquin. I am a managing partner with Sofinova. And uh, so uh, hearing what Gina was saying, uh, I, I was, uh, before going to my speech, uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, you will hear roughly the same messages uh, about business, uh, uh, you know, new kind of business model, about uh, capacity to raise money. But if I may, I would like maybe to start my speech by saying what will be different in my, uh, between Sofinova and, 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 and Gina and Emerald. And uh, um, because of our, of our experiences, uh, we have been an in in early stage investor, we have been an early stage investor for 30 years in a very specific field, which is biotech. We are a little bit more optimistic on two things, if I may. Uh, two things are we could do, we think that we could do early stage investment, seed investment. We have always been invest in, in, in investing in the seed stage in biotech, and why not doing that in clean tech? And you will see at the end of my presentation that we are even in a process to raise a seed fund dedicated to a very specific field, but we are in a process to do that. And second point is, yes, you could raise a lot of money for very ambitious companies in Europe. We did it. You could raise, a, before IPO, we could raise a 150 million euro if, you, if, if your project is ambitious enough. And to do that, you need to be international from scratch. International from scratch in terms of management, international from scratch in terms of, uh, of uh, equity structure. And if you succeed to do that, if you succeed to have a US investor, if you succeed to have three different types of, uh, of, um, uh, of um, foreigners, uh, foreign investors in your, in, in your fundraising, then you could be very ambitious and you could have an interesting story. So, but now, uh, uh, this will be the two main differences between my, my, our two speech. Otherwise, I, I have exactly the same, uh, the same message. So, uh, you will get access to, uh, to, to my slides, presumably. Will you? Okay, so I will not uh, read them. Uh, this is a global presentation of, of Sofinova. So just to let you know that I am a completely different angle than Emerald. Emerald has been a specialized fund in clean tech. We are a generalist, generalist fund. We have been in existence for 40 years. We raised a series of uh, six funds in a row, Sofina Capital 1 to Sofina Capital 6. The last fund was in 2009. 2009, we raised Sofina Capital 6 for 260 million euros. And these funds, Capital 6 and the followers, uh, will, uh, will invest in three different fields, IT, uh, life sciences, and, and clean tech. But in each field, we try to be extremely focused. Clean tech in itself is not a field. What is, the, what, 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 what is the relation between a Tesla uh, that uh, Gina was alluding to and, 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 uh, and a biochemistry, uh, uh, biochemistry uh, company? How could you master the two sectors? So we have decided to be ex extremely focused in each field and in clean tech, because this is a topic of the day. In clean tech, we, we, we're going to do only um, energy storage and energy generation. And, and this is the topic of the day. And uh, green chemistry and in industrial biotech. And so I have been asked to advocate for this very new field and, and I will tell you why we have decided to, to, to focus on that. Coming back to our story, uh, I think that we have a very strong story that we have been building in a very specific field, which is uh, therapeutics. I told you we are investing in, uh, in life sciences, but in life sciences we do invest exclusively in finding new drugs. We do not invest in services, we do not invest in diagnostic, we do not invest in such things. We invest in new drugs. Why we do invest in new drugs? And that will be a topic of, uh, not the next slide, but the slide after. And we have been, and we... So, what do we do in terms of uh, type of investment? We do exclusively first round investment. That's the, one of the difference between uh, Gina and myself. We do exclusively A round, and which you know, have three type of uh, real, uh, uh, three type of, uh, three kinds really of, uh, of different investments. So the, the DNA of Sofinova, the DNA is to bring, to bring companies from the labs, from the academic lab to, uh, to, to a real life and to find, to start companies. That's what we call, that's what the, what the US investor called Series A. But, uh, what we are very much interested in as well are specific type of uh, Series A, which are the spin-offs. Because we think that the spin-offs are 
a real opportunity to get uh, a very low stage situation with late stage assets. And uh, the, a lot of investors try to leverage uh, in their portfolio, uh, you know, uh, early stage situation which are extremely risky with later stage situation. We don't do that. We do exclusively early stage situation, but we leverage the early stage st uh, staff from the academic labs with later stage technology which are coming from the from, coming from industry. So this is 60% of our, what we do. This is 30% of what we do, and from time to time. And our last investment is in Berlin, so this is uh, called Noxon. Uh, we do turnaround with companies that uh, have been in existence for eight years, which, were, uh, which have uh, completely exhausted uh, the, the means of their, uh, of their investors, and we need to, uh, they need to restart. So turnaround situation, restart, and that's what we, we like, but we call them uh, Series A prime, because this is restart, and this is startup these are startup situation. And we have done that quite, uh, you, know, you asked uh, about uh, exits, so a few exits over, over, over the last 18 months. So, and we have done that from very low valuation, pre-money first round on the, on the right. And we sold this company to a uh, to, to corporation. These are not, these are not uh, IPOs, it, it was in one exception, Movetis went first IPO, and then uh, we sold it to, to Shai Pharmaceutical, in, uh, in, in, in UK. But we think that this type of, succe of success uh, could be done if only if you are very focused, if you master the field in, you, in, which, uh, in which you invest. And this allowed us to provide, for one of the funds we raised, uh, we provided uh, almost 30% net return to our investors for 12 years. 30% a year. By investing exclusively at seed stage, early stage in, uh, in, in European technology, exclusively European technology. And so that was the ground of our strategy in 1995. That's why we decided to focus on that field. We had notified a, a full industrial field, which is the pharma industry, and we had notified that they were going in the wall. And that's what they are now. They were going in the wall because uh, that, uh, they, they, they will be experiencing uh, what we call a, a, a patent cliff. All their you know, patents they had in, a, their, their in, the, in, the, in, in their portfolio were going to, be, to, to, to become public soon, and this is exactly what they experience now. And the R&D productivity in this big, big organization was decreasing dramatically. So what we decided to do and we were not the only one, of course. Uh, this, this was a global trend in, in, the, in, in the VC industry. We decided to do that. We will address their issue. We will not try to invest uh, in, in a startup to invest in a startup. No, we will, ask, we will address their issue. We will try to answer pro pro proactively their problem 10 years in advance. And, and, so, and we thought that the biotech in that field was becoming a paradigm shift. For, for, for these big corporations. And again, so you understood already, I said that already three times, we decided to remain focused, 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 to master a field. If I, if I want to invest in a biotech company, if, one, one, if somebody in my team wants to invest in a biotech company in healthcare now, today, he first will call uh, any kind of uh, head of R&D in, in the big corporation. We know all of them. This is network. This is exactly what Gina said. You need to master the industry in which you invest. You need to build confidence, of course, with, with, with entrepreneurs, but you need to build confidence also with the big corporations. They know that they will, you will, we will solve one of their problems. So that's what we said in 1995, and that's what we said today. We discovered a brand new field that we think in five to 10 years from now, we'll have a real problem. We have a pre this is the chemical industry. The chemical industry. So in the clean tech environment, we do invest in energy, as I said, and we made uh, two investments, one in battery field, which is zinc air, rechargeable zinc air technology, and uh, in uh, storage, uh, in one in the uh, energy storage, which is a uh, magnesium, uh, hydrogen uh, energy storage, which is a uh, uh, hydrogen, hi uh, magnesium hydride, magnesium hydride uh, technology to store energy. 
But in addition of that, and, and, and that's pretty unique. I mean, uh, you have heard uh, Gina saying, well, agriculture, I, I don't like. Uh, there are very few investors investing in that field, but we think this is a very interesting field. The future of the chemical industry will have a bottleneck, and the bottleneck is they need to master biomass. They need to master biomass. And, and if you look at the, uh, any kind of uh, energy, let's take the energy storage. Energy storage, will, you will have a lot of different solutions. Uh, there will be uh, hydrogen uh, technology, there will be uh, other kind of uh, fuel cell technology and so forth. In the chemical industry, there is no solution but mastering the biomass. This is a bottleneck. This is a bottleneck, and, and this will be an obligation because, of course, most of the molecules that the chemical industry are producing now to produce carpet, to produce painting, to produce solvents, to produce it comes from the petroleum. And because of the petroleum instability, because of uh, geo, uh, geograph uh, geopolitical uh, issues and so forth, they need to get access to something else. And they know that they need to master biomass. And if you uh, discuss with all the, uh, all the industrial um, chemical industry today, they all build corporate venture now to address this issue, and they don't know how to do that. So we think that what we call industrial biotech and green chemistry will become a paradigm shift in, 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 in the uh, development of the uh, chem uh, chemical industry. And once again, remains focused. More than that, because they are, uh, this, is, this is a biomass, and because there are already some industry involved in, uh, in, in biomass, we think that uh, uh, some of them will try to take the opportunity, oh, there is something missing there. <laughs> some of them will take the opportunity to, uh, to compete with the, industrial, uh, with the chemical industry, and you have already seen that. On one side, you see Rodia doing an investment in Brazil, in sugarcane, in energy, energy, Rodia. So what going to do? Oil and gas industry. Uh, Rodia doing an investment in sugarcane, uh, in, in, in bioenergy. On the other side, you see uh, agri the agrofood industry. So there is a very powerful tool in France called uh, Sophie Proteol. There are the, uh, the, uh, the oil uh, industry, they, 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 they own uh, Le Sieur. There so are a traditional uh, oil industry uh, for, for food. But they are number one in, bio uh, in biodiesel in Europe because of their knowledge in food. What they, what they are intending to, to, to do is to go down the value chain to build a new industry and to get a more added value to their, to, 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 to their know-how, to their products. So as a result of this, between the chemical, and, and, you, and you see also the chemical industry doing some kind of a crazy investment. Mitsubishi buying, buy, buying fields in Madagascar. What's going on? They just want to master that feedstock. They just want to control their feedstock. So you see the, the chemical industry going, uh, you know, trying to, um, uh, uh, you know, going to, 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 to uh, you know, uh, agricultural investment. You see the agricultural players trying to, to become industrial, uh, industrial players, and you see the oil and gas industry being obliged to, to consider what they will do in that field because this is their, uh, the, the, their market. We think that this is a fantastic opportunity for us. In addition of the fact that biomass control will be the bottleneck of the chemical industry, in addition, we think this is a fantastic opportunity to, build, to, to sell companies for strategic value and not for um, EBITDA stories. And uh, Gina told, uh, and, and, and this is what exactly what we, what we learned from, uh, from the biotech healthcare. Uh, knowledge. Uh, the five, the five investments I, I, I shown you before, uh, the five exits, none of them were profitable. None. And we sold one of them, we sold it almost for one billion euro. But these were strategic technologies that the, 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 the big guys were obliged to buy in a competitive environment. That's the key. That's all. <laughs>